okay, Gabriel? Sure. Great. Why? I'm worried about you. If I were any better, Grace, I'd be dead. Now what's up? You got another package this morning. Overnight from Germany. I was expecting that. Where is it? Well, it kind of came open, but I salvaged the contents. There was a letter from your great uncle Wolfgang and a journal. The package just came open, huh? How'd you like the journal? Someone has to look after you. You're in trouble, in case you didn't know it. Yeah, you've been reading my horoscope again, haven't you, Grace? Just read the journal carefully, Gabriel. Please. I got it. St. George's books. Oh, Professor Hartridge. I'm glad you called. Did you? Oh, you did. You did. Oh, wait. Slow down. They agree. Really? You think that's them? Well, you're within a wheel. Ogun Badagri, huh? Well, that does sound like it. Dambala, the snake. That's the wavy pattern at the bottom. Okay. The 1791 slave revolt in Santa Domingo? Well, why would the Veve show up there? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. L look, I'll come over as soon as I can, okay? Relax, Professor. I'm excited too, but you're gonna give yourself a heart attack. Okay, thanks. See ya. I wish you'd tell me what's going on. I swear you're gonna step into a hole you may never get out of. Don't look so worried. No one knows what I'm doing. I'm perfectly safe, and I'm getting some great stuff for the book. Besides, there's something about all this. My dreams. What about your dreams? Oh, nothing. I'll be careful. I promise. We got that book you ordered in this morning. The one on Rada drums. Really? Great. Times dated June 22, 1993. Disgusted with the state of the voodoo murder case, Gabriel turns right to his horoscope. The shadow upon you is no longer reversible. Wonderful. Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. Wolfgang's letter says, Dear Gabriel, please read the enclosed journal carefully. It might help you understand your family's special obligations and our current predicament. God be with you. Uncle Wolfgang. Gabriel reads through the pages Wolfgang marked. He reads of Gunter Ritter's journey to Charleston as a witch hunter, hired by the townsmen to solve a series of ritualistic murders. He reads about Gunter's meeting with the beautiful slave woman, Tetelo, and of Gunter's tormenting urges for her. Paul bastard. He reads of their physical union and passion, and of Gunter's investigation into the murders. The victims were all crew members on a certain slaving expedition to Africa, it seems. The second to the last entry describes Gunter's plan to set a trap for the coven committing the murders. He'd found a name on one of the surviving members of the crew, a man now living in the West Indies. Gunter has spread a false rumor that the man is returning to Charleston. He himself will impersonate a sailor and allow himself to fall into the hands of the coven. Naturally, Gunter has arranged for able-bodied assistants to follow and attack the coven before they can do him harm. Ballsy son of a bitch, wasn't he? Gabriel turns to the final entry of the journal.
The book contains several pages of Radha drum codes. Grace actually managed to find a book under Radha drum code. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? How do you feel about New Orleans these days? <laughs> I'd rather be anywhere else in the world right now. Do you have messages for me? I've given everything to you. I'll be back later. Have fun. It's so dark in here. Dr. John? Hello? Thing just tried to kill me. He did. I am sorry. The museum is closed today, you see. We were not expecting visitors. But if you will excuse me, Mr. Knight, I must go look for him. He is incredibly valuable. You don't need to ask twice. I'm out of here. By the way, you might want to lock your door the next time you're closed. Not a bad idea. Goodbye, Mr. Knight. Posted on the door of the museum is a sign saying, closed today only. This time the door is actually locked. Welcome, Seeker. You must be the one Dr. John called me about. I guess so. My name is... Wait! Gabriel Knight. You're too quick for me. Actually, Dr. John told me. You have come to the right place, Mr. Knight. Tell me how I can help. A large, sluggish snake rests on the floor of the fancy bird cage. Apparently, Magenta is not a fastidious housekeeper. A shed skin shares the cage with its original owner. Magenta Snake looks a little sickly, but Gabriel would still rather not stick his hand in the cage. The mask is made of carved wood and looks African. There's a chest in the corner that looks like a carnival machine. It's impolite to mess with other people's stuff. Gabriel should wait until he's asked. A large crystal ball is prominently displayed. Gabriel figures that many men have picked up things in Magentia's parlor, but he'd rather not. Magentia Moonbeam is wrapped in gauze and silks. She looks vaguely mysterious and mysteriously vague. Could I ask you a few questions? Of course, Seeker. What can you tell me about voodoo? My practice is mainly selling charms and potions with magic power, such as Gree Gree and voodoo oils. You know, everything from unrequited love, to wandering spouses, to winning a lawsuit. But my spells and charms are powerful, and they work. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Why, that has nothing to do with me and my clientele. 
but I can tell you that you should stay as far from it as possible. There is badness there. Very bad. Dr. John tells me you are a voodoo practitioner of some kind. Yes, I'm a voodoo -ian. A voodoo priestess. Nice place you've got here. Thank you. For me, it's a sort of temple. I can see that. Tell me about yourself. Yes? What would you like to hear? Tell me anything at all. I haven't always lived in Orleans. I came here from Kansas as a young woman. What kind of people come to see you? Seekers after the truth, such as yourself. How did you get into this business? I trained in the voodoo arts for many years with the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Who's she? You have never heard of her? For shame! I can see you know little of the world of magic. I'm beginning to get that impression, yes. How many voodoo yens are there? No one knows exactly. Many practice in secret. There are probably hundreds. But of course, the level and the power of the voodoo yens differ greatly, depending on their training and natural gifts. Tell me anything at all. I began studying voodoo more than 20 years ago. I'm well versed in the magical arts. Do you do anything else? I'm a voodooian. That is plenty. It takes much spiritual effort. Tell me anything at all. Many non-believers come to me. They are usually believers when they leave. I can't think of anything. Very well. What can you tell me about voodoo? Much of a voodoo Ian's work is protecting her clients from the spells of others. I make special protective Grigri to be worn in secret. They keep evil spells from working against my clients. So you don't think the voodoo aspects of the case are fake? Fake? Let me tell you about fake. If I get information through the grapevine and make use of it, is that fake? No, that is part of a voodooian's power. If people don't believe, there's not much I can do. But if they do believe, that is a part of my power too. But there are things, monsieur, things not even a little bit fake, I can tell you. Believe it or not, but stay away from it. What can you tell me about voodoo? The recipes for voodoo charms have been handed down from master to apprentice for centuries. What do you mean? Do you know something about the case? I work hard on fine-tuning my spiritual antenna, Monsieur Knight. And I get a clear signal from that direction. Beware. What can you tell me about voodoo? I have told you all it is proper for you to know, Mr. Knight. What can you tell me about Nolens? Nolens is the center of voodoo practice in the United States. What can you tell me about Nolens? It is a fascinating city with many dark secrets. Do you get many people in here on an average day? Some days the need for my power is greater than others. But I have many regular clients who would be lost without my vision, Mr. Knight. I can imagine. What can you tell me about Nolens? It is my favorite place in the world. That's a great looking mask on the wall. It's from Africa. A gift to me from Queen Tabitha. Give me an example of Gri Gri. All right. Here's an old one. Take a lodestone and some brimstone to a crossroads at midnight. Light the brimstone with a match. A spirit will come and give you advice in gambling. Give me an example of Gree Gree. Here's an old hoodoo, Dr. Gree Gree. Place a dime under your client's tongue. If the client is under a spell of any kind, the dime will turn black. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? You mean like my beloved Grimwald? She's a python, you know. 
quite deadly in the wrong hands. I was trained by one of the great voodoo queens to learn how to hypnotize and handle snakes. Do you know Dr. John well? Oh, yes. We are old friends. Those with gifts are often drawn together. So let's say I came to you wanting to attract a woman. What would you advise? I wouldn't think you have any trouble attracting women, Mr. Knight. Uh, no, I guess I don't. Give me an example of Greek Greek. To send someone away, take a rotten egg and write that person's name on it nine times. You can also write on it where you want to send that person to. Take it and throw it against his door at midnight. Tell me more about snakes. Oh, I wouldn't want to give away my trade secrets. Do you have any idea what Cabri San Carl means? No. No, I don't. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, yes. She was the first of the great voodoo queens. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? There are many voodoo churches in New Orleans, no? Yes, but have you heard of a secret voodoo houndfall? Wherever did you hear such a ridiculous story? There is no such thing. Tell me about the animal masks. I saw them used once or twice when I was younger, but you don't see them much anymore. They're too... close. Too close to what? Just bad karma. So what advice do you give your clients? I tell them to follow the light, be aware of the darkness, and always get expert spiritual advice from someone with the sight. That's what I thought you'd say. Give me an example of Greek Greek. Here's a nasty one. To kill someone, get a sock or shoe that belongs to that person. Put graveyard dirt in it and bury it under their front steps. Hmm, does that work? I don't know. I never tried it. Give me an example of Greek Greek. To ensure the safety of your child, cut a lock of its hair while it is still a baby and keep it with you. The child must have all its hair before it can die. These are interesting. They're very old. The Greek Greek that I prepare is much more powerful, I can assure you. But I don't give out those secrets. Do you know anything about Veve? I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about Black Voodoo? It is the oldest, darkest heart of Voodoo. Do you know anything about Black Voodoo? There are some things it's better not to know about, Monsieur Knight. Does Ogun Badagri mean anything to you? I don't know anything about that. Have you ever heard of Gambala? I don't know anything about that. Have you ever heard the word Schottenjäger? I don't know anything about that. Uh, about Grimwald. What about her? How did you learn how to handle Grimwald? I told you, a great voodoo queen taught me. She learned from Marie Laveau herself. Uh-huh. Fascinating. Would you consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? No, I couldn't do that. You might do some gree gree of your own, no? One must be very careful with such things. Hair clippings, nail parings, and snake scales. Are you sure you wouldn't consider giving me one of Grimwald's scales? I told you, I couldn't do that. How about showing me how you handle Grimwald? Really? You would like to see me dance, perhaps? That would be swell. No matter what you see, do not be frightened. I'll give it my best shot.
that doesn't work that way. It's impolite to mess with other people's stuff. Gabriel figures that may There. Truly inspiring, isn't it? That's well, certainly one word for it. Gabriel can't see you. Since Magentia has a snake, it might be best not to discuss the snake scales with her. That doesn't seem to work that way. Does this mean anything to you? It's beautiful. I love it. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, but if you know where I can buy one... Sorry, it would be rather hard to find one these days. Oh, well, so be it. Do you know anything about animal masks? Um, yes, but we don't use those anymore. That doesn't seem to work that way. Do these symbols mean anything to you? Ah, the voodoo code. It is very secret, yes. I studied it with my mentor, the great Queen Tabitha. Really? Great. Can you tell me what it says? I'm afraid I could never translate this code for an outsider such as yourself, Monsieur Knight. Ask you a few more questions. Certainly. Uh, about Rimwall. What about her? Where did you get Rimwald? She belonged to a traveling reptile show. She was being terribly mistreated, so I offered to buy her. She's named after a spirit guide I had once. The spirit Grimwald was a very powerful female snake priestess in Egyptian times. Grimwald doesn't sound Egyptian. I only know what the spirits tell me, monsieur. I'm sure they know better than we. Nothing. Never mind. All right. What's the significance of St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve. It is the greatest night of the voodoo year. There is always a traditional conclave on St. John's Eve. Most of our voodoo churches these days hold functions in the church hall. But in the old days, they had ceremonies out in the wild. They wore animal masks and had a huge bonfire and dancing. I used to go when I was an apprentice. Sometimes in the swamp, you know, Bayou St. John. Sometimes at the lake, Lake Pontchartrain. Are you sure you can't translate this for me? As I said, it's a very secret code. Surely you can see I'm trying to learn as much as I can here. How am I supposed to become an insider if you won't help me? That's true, I suppose. Perhaps if the Loa were to grant you their approval. How do I get that? By using my Ask the Loa machine. A machine? Yes. A spirit guided me to it years ago in an antique store. And its guidance has never faltered. I trust it implicitly. 
I see. The spirits often work in mysterious ways, Mr. Knight. If you aren't willing to ask... No, no, I'll ask. Uh, let's see here. Well done, Mr. Knight. You have earned the Loire's approval. Truly, it's an honor. Now, about that code... Hmm, let me see. Well, some of it is nonsense, I'm afraid. Whoever wrote this wasn't very good. That's all right. Just tell me what it says. It starts with a D and J. Then... okay, this not makes sense. It says, Conclave tonight, bring... Well, then there's more nonsense. F-W-E-T-K-A-S-H. The last bit might mean cash. Fresh cash? Doesn't make much sense. That's okay, thanks. D-J, Conclave, K-A-S-H. It's a start. I'm happy I could help. Does this mean anything to you? Hmm. These are magical symbols. Deep magic. Really? Have you seen them before? No. And how do you know they're magic symbols? Seeker, my eyes are unveiled to see truly that which is in front of me. Uh-huh. Thanks, Tom. Gabriel can't see a way to use that. Could you look at this and tell me if you recognize anything about it? That's from those voodoo murders, isn't it? That has nothing to do with me. Could I ask you a few more questions? Certainly. Uh, about Rimwall. What about her? How about showing me your snake dance again? I won't make you wait, Monsieur Knight. I shall again amaze you. You certainly will. Gabriel grabs the shed snake skin while Magenta is otherwise occupied. Gabriel figures that 
There. Truly inspiring, isn't it? That's certainly one word for it. Could I ask you a few more questions? Certainly. Well, I guess I'll be going now. As you wish. May the protection of the Snake God go with you. Oh, uh, thanks. What's the good word? Partridge? Ah! Oh god, not again. These look better. Whatever Hartridge may have learned, he can't share it with Gabriel now. At least not vocally. That would be up to the coroner. I'm not touching that body. A wastebasket next to the desk is filled with crumpled paper. There's nothing of interest in the wastebasket. There must be something here about what Hartridge found out about that Vevey. This is his notepad, but the top sheet's been taken. Hartridge's notes. This must be about the Veve. Exotic fish lend even more color to the cluttered office. Gabriel doesn't want to upset the fish. Thank God Hartridge was a doodler. Gabriel magnifies the shed skin from a gentle moonbeam snake. The snake scales are hued brown. They don't match the scales from Lake Pontchartrain. The iridescent scale is hued olive green. seen enough old books to last a lifetime. Before leaving the university, Gabriel notifies campus security about Hartridge's body. Why? You're kind of a pale green color. Come here. Pale green, you say? Charming. What's that on your face? I'm sure you'll tell me. Looks like a sparkly or something. Got it. I love it when you pick stuff off my face, Grace. Well, excuse me. There's something in the ashtray. Gabriel can't see a...
it is a snake scale in the ashtray. Gabriel finds a snake scale in the ashtray. It's a souvenir from the museum's python. He places the two scales together. The two iridescent scales are a perfect match. That doesn't seem to work that way. Got a minute, Greg? What's up? Do you have messages for me? I've given everything to you. I'm going out. Don't hurry back on my account. Identical little girls are playing jump rope outside the station. There's something a little off about them. Hey there, girls. The little girls stare at Gabriel, but say nothing to him. Of all the things I could go to jail for, that is not going to be one of them. Gabriel's double dutch skills leave something to be desired. Hey, hey, hey. Night. Come on in. Ask you about some stuff. You're the writer. Ask away. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Not since the last time you asked. You know, if you started carrying a lollipop around, you might get more respect as a detective. Go to hell. Trying for a real estate job with that coat? No. Are you trying out for a janitorial job with that hair? Have you ever called the hair club for man? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. There's been another murder. A professor at Tulane. Oh, Christ. You're not gonna start this again. Just listen. This guy's name is Hartridge. He was a professor in African studies at Tulane. Well, yesterday I went to see him about the voodoo murders case. He agreed to do some research for me. He calls me up this morning, tells me he's on to something big, and when I get over there, the guy's dead. You know, you're really getting your ass in a sling over this thing, Knight. It's not about me. Look, Hartridge's death looked just like Crash's. I'm telling you, they were both murdered, and by the same people who did the voodoo murders. Did either Crash or this new guy have their hearts ripped out? No. Then there's nothing to link either to the voodoo murders M.O. Besides that, the case is closed, Knight. If the coroner's report asks for a homicide investigation on either of these guys, fine. But it's not going to be related to the Voodoo Murders case unless we find damn good reason to do so. But I'm the link to the Voodoo Murders case. Don't you see? Look, if I were you, I wouldn't repeat that to anyone. Because if I weren't an old friend of yours, I might take you seriously and lock you up. As it is, maybe you should start keeping your mouth shut and not involve other people with this shit if you think it's so dangerous. I have this. Take a look at these notes. They're from Professor Hartridge at Tulane University. Yeah? What about them? They confirm that the pattern from the murders is of African origin. Really? That's incredible, isn't it? Something like that showing up here. It's been here for quite some time, so it seems. I'm impressed. 
Okay, you convinced me. The murders were done by a legitimate voodoo cult. I have these two snake scales. One's from the crime scene at Lake Pontchartrain. The other's from a snake in the voodoo museum on Ursulines and Charters. Is this common? Do they all look alike? Not at all. They're both constrictor scales and the coloring is the same. A python's coloring is quite individualistic. A python? That's right. Hardly an indigenous snake to Louisiana. Somehow, some way, the Voodoo Museum's python was at the scene of the Lake Pontchartrain murder. Well, I'd call that a lead, all right. It definitely suggests certain lines of inquiry at the museum. Not bad work, Knight. Okay, I'll reopen the case. I hate to admit it, but you've done some pretty good detective work here, Knight. Well, you know what they say. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, hmm, point taken. Glad I could inspire you. I'll check around the department, but I have a feeling I'm on my own. I'll be in touch. Meanwhile, you stay out of trouble. I mean it. I'll try. Thanks, Bo. Now lay low and let me handle this. Yeah, fine. Excuse me, officer? Yes? Ah, oh, never mind. Fine, I'll get back to work. Hey. Hey. Can I bother you again, officer? What is it this time? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He left for the day. Sorry. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? Hound? What? Houndfall. It's a temple. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's pulling your leg on that one. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black <laughs> voodoo? Isn't that kind of the same thing? Actually, no. Well, all I know about voodoo is to keep away from it. You should too, Knight. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Can't say that I have, but it sounds dirty. So, what's new around the old police station? Well, we're now allowed to shoot chatty pedestrians on sight. That sounds convenient. I like it. Excuse me, Officer Frick? Whatever it is, no. Now get out of here before I have you arrested for disturbing the peace. So, anything interesting happening around here? Look. I've got a job to do. Chat with someone else, huh? It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day.